The Lord heard and had mercy on me. The Lord became my helper. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. Today is Friday, February 19th, Friday after Ash Wednesday, and Mass this morning is offered for the repose of the soul of Stephen Postick. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Show gracious favor, O Lord, we pray, to the works of penance we have begun, that we may have strength to accomplish with sincerity the bodily observances we undertake. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord God, cry out full-throated and unsparingly, lift up your voice like a trumpet blast. Tell my people their wickedness and the house of Jacob their sins. They seek me day after day and desire to know my ways, like a nation that has done what is just and not abandoned the law of their God. They ask me to declare what is due them, pleased to gain access to God. Why do we fast and you not see it? Afflict ourselves and you take no note of it. Lo, on your fast day you carry out your own pursuits and drive all your laborers. Yes, your fast ends in quarreling and fighting, striking with wicked claw. Would that today you might fast so as to make your voice heard on high. Is this the manner of fasting I wish, of keeping a day of penance? That a man bow his head like a reed and lie in sackcloth and ashes? Do you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? This rather is the fasting that I wish, releasing those bound unjustly, untying the thongs of the yoke, setting free the oppressed, breaking every yoke, sharing your bread with the hungry, sheltering the oppressed and homeless, clothing the naked when you see them, and not turning your back on your own. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your wound shall quickly be healed. Your vindication shall go before you, and the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. The word of the Lord. A heart contrite and humbled, O God, you will not spurn. A heart contrite and humbled, O God, you will not spurn. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. In the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt, and of my sin cleanse me. A heart contrite and humbled, O God, you will not spurn. For I acknowledge my offense, and my sin is before me always. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. A heart contrite and humble, O God, you will not spare. For you are not pleased with sacrifices. Should I offer burnt offering, you would not accept it. My sacrifice, O God, is a contrite spirit. A heart contrite and humble, O God, you will not spurn. 
a heart contrite and humble, O God, you will not spare. Your blessing. May the Lord be in your heart and on your lips, and you may proclaim this gospel worthily and well. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Seek good and not evil, so that you may live, and the Lord will be with you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. The disciples of John approached Jesus and said, Why do we and the Pharisees fast much, but your disciples do not fast? Jesus answered them, can the wedding guests mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. first reading today has the prophet Isaiah coming out, sort of swinging against the people, uh, condemning what we might call a formalism in their penitential practices. Uh, the people are calling out like, Lord, how come, you know, we're fasting, you don't see it, we afflict ourselves and you take no note of it. Uh, and what's happening here is that these people are, are carrying out the external signs of penance, uh, the fastings and the afflictions, but their hearts are yet unmoved. Uh, there's a sense of hypocrisy here, insincerity of what we might call a disintegration. Uh, what's happening on the interior isn't matching what's happening on the exterior. A reminder from the prophet and therefore from the Lord uh, that what the Lord desires is that what's happening on the outside is a manifestation of what's within. And that things like fasting and affliction, these penitential practices aren't genuine unless there's true interior conversion, this change of life. It's a similar sort of thing to what Jesus will call out the Pharisees on later during his public ministry, this carrying out of the externals without the interior movement and without the good works. And it's the same sort of warning that perhaps he would give to us uh, as we begin this season of penitential practices as we're on our first Friday of the Lenten season, uh, that it's possible for us, whether uh, intentionally or not, uh, to be all about the externals without interior conversion. Uh, that we can be uh, the opposite of what we ask the Lord for in that opening prayer here today. We ask that uh, we might undertake with sincerity these bodily observances. That they would really be manifestations uh, of our desire for conversion to be closer to Him. And I think back with just like, I don't want to call it regret, but sort of want to slap my former self. I don't know if you've ever had this sort of situation where it's a Friday during Lent, so let's have the best damn seafood meal we can imagine. It's like, well, okay, yeah, the external practice is there, uh, but it's not the spirit of the thing. Uh, and I think we can fall into that trap even easily with the penitential practices that we take on, that we take them on out of different motivations. Maybe it's self-improvement. I'm going to emerge from Lent thinner and fitter than I've ever been. Uh, maybe it's looking for the ability to conquer. I'm going to pick a penitential practice that's difficult so I can prove myself in some way. But are these things helping me to follow Jesus more closely? Right, are they manifestations of some interior work that I'm allowing the Lord to do in me? And so what we hear from Isaiah today and what we hear from uh, Jesus later in the Gospels uh, 
is that the Lord is not pleased with an external observance that's devoid of interior conversion. And we can also say that it's not possible for us to say that we have that interior conversion without carrying out the external. Uh, I can't say that I'm on the inside fulfilling the idea of uh, Lenten disciplines and dig into a stake on a Friday. So we can't have the interior without the external. We can't have the external without the interior be pleasing to the Lord. What he wants is for us to have this integration, this wholeness. That the external is a manifestation of what is happening on the inside. And so that's not always easy, I know. And so it's good reason to ask the Lord for his help and his grace. Uh, that we might allow for him to truly be at work in us. Uh, that we might desire to grow closer to him, to love like he does, to do all of those things that he lists for us today, these corporal and spiritual works of mercy, that our interior would be motivated to true love and conversion, and that what happens on the exterior is a manifestation of that. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Amen. Spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer, O Lord, the sacrifice of our Lenten observance, praying that it may make our intentions acceptable to you and add to our powers of self-restraint. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you will that our self-denial should give you thanks. Humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. 
For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, and Andrew, his assistant, and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory of now and Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer an appropriate sign of peace. peace with you. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. May the receiving of your body, blood, Lord Jesus Christ, not bring me to judgment and condemnation, but through your loving mercy, be for me protection of mind and body and healing remedy. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be O Lord, make me know your ways. Teach me your paths. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that through partaking of this mystery we may be cleansed of all our misdeeds and be and so be suited for the remedies of your compassion. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a reminder that we will have Stations of the Cross here in the church tonight at 7 followed by an opportunity for confession and Eucharistic adoration until 8.30. And that will be the case most of the Fridays during Lent. On the first Friday of the month, we'll have a Station of the Cross followed by our first Friday night of prayer. Hope to see you there tonight at 7. The Lord be with you. And with you. And bow down for the blessing. May your mighty deeds, O God of mercy, for... For your mighty deeds, O God of mercy, may your people offer endless thanks, and by observing the age-old disciplines along their pilgrim journey, may they merit to come and behold you forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass has ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Mary, help of Christians. St. Joseph. Pray for us. St. Paul. Pray for us. Praise be Jesus Christ. Now.